Hi, I'm Natalia and this is Merida from the Teen Council at the Bronx Museum of the Arts and today we will be sitting with... Uh, I am Cecile Chung, a uh, visual artist. Thank you all for coming to Black Gallery AIM Artist Hub at 80 Y Street to visit me. Do you talk about the relationship you see between Asian artworks in museums and your art? I did not grow up going to museums, um, actually until I came to study college in New York City. Um, but living in Ecuador, my mom always had these um, Chinese objects in the house, and she, has, she still has them. But growing up, there were so many of them that when my friends would come to my house, they would actually say, Este es el Museo Chino. This is the Chinese Museum. And I think part of it was because my mom uh, was very nostalgic. She was also born in Ecuador, but she lived many years in China uh, before returning to Ecuador. So I think um, for her, and then later for me, those um, objects became um, a thread, a connection, obviously, to her culture. And for me, it took a while to, to make the work that I'm making now. I feel like my work is becoming more and more Asian. A lot of people think that I, I must relate to the Asian women, uh, the Asian adults in my work. Um, but I was born, as I said, um, I was born in Ecuador to Chinese parents. And then I lived uh, in Macau in Asia with my grandmother from the age of 10 to 15. And then I went back to Ecuador to live with my mom again at the age of 15. And I was enrolled in an American high school and then I came here for college and I stayed. So I am actually, in my work, I'm actually the Western child. It was not until maybe 10 years ago that I was in the Art Institute of Chicago with my mom. And because I was with her, I said, mom, let's go to the Chinese wing of the museum and we saw this blue and white plates and one of them was very intriguing because um, it had a, a Chinese landscape with western figures and then I thought oh look at the Dutch because Delftware is very known for the blue and white as well so I thought oh look at the Dutch copying the Chinese techniques, mm -hmm. but actually it was the Chinese copying the Dutch copying the Chinese, right? So uh, by seeing those objects in museums, it had a big impact on me. Actually, the work that I'm working now here, it, it started with that blue and white uh, wear and techniques that I'm kind of excavating the visual language the historical but also uh, the contemporary visual language of Chinatown. I usually like, when I do a residency, I usually like for my work to be somewhat site specific. And being so close to Manhattan Chinatown, I want to excavate because Chinatown is also changing really fast. Um, so I'm trying to excavate in a way um, these traditional images, and I'm constantly looking for blue and white wear within this environment. What influenced you to use ping pong paddles as a ground for your paintings? That's a great observation, Maraday. Um, so I was once in a thrift shop, mm -hmm. and I always like to discover new things. And one time I saw this ping pong paddle, and I held it on my hands, and then I thought, I was really attracted to it as an object. And I thought, how can I make this fit into my work? Um, so I bought it anyway, I took it to my studio, and then I realized that it resembled a, it could resemble or remind people of myself of a um, Chinese fan, mm -hmm. or um, like those Asian mirrors that have yeah. a landscape on the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's, uh, I started using ping pong paddles. Um, I also use um, skateboards. I also use um, skimmer boards, like the ones that you see on the back. 
So it's, it's, a, it's about that connectivity and it's about that universal um, experience, you know. So recently I started learning um, to weave tapestries mm -hmm. um, and also I recently took a class on, on basket weaving and I feel like so many traditional cultures use that technique, you know, and um, I think I would love to incorporate that those techniques and different materials. Mm -hmm. so, so will we be seeing some of those new techniques and some new artwork? Being here has been great because being in a different space, mm -hmm. uh, in a brand new space, have also given me the opportunity to start fresh with certain techniques that I have not done before. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the process of making an encaustic painting? An encaustic is really beeswax cooked with resin and it's a hot process. Uh, so I work flat, it's usually on wood. I do not use canvas because otherwise um, the encaustic would crack and break and it's a melted process. And each painting has around 30 layers of encaustic and it, between each layer um, I add different material. The process very much is like a collage. How long does it usually take you to make one? So it's easier for me to work in the summer. It's very hard to work for me to work in winter because I need proper ventilation. Mm -hmm. um, and but with encaustic, it has to cool off before you add another layer. So there are all these outside elements that that influence mm -hmm. the time. Um, but I would say, you know, a month, two months. I actually uh, work with three pieces at a time. So when one is curing, um, I work on the other one and I continue the process like that. So it depends on the size. It also depends how often I'm in my studio.